everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and today I have a DIY video that I actually asked you guys over on Instagram if you were interested in. And if you are not already following me on Instagram, I love doing like little polls and questions and just like asking your guys' opinions on my videos all the time. So definitely follow me over on Instagram. It's Lone Fox Home. I post a lot of behind the scenes stuff there as well. But I asked you guys if you wanted to see DIY wall art ideas. Now, a lot of my DIY videos will feature one or two wall art pieces every now and then, but I thought I would focus today video on wall art strictly so we are going to be doing five DIY wall art decor pieces and they kind of range from paintings to macrame mirrors tons of fun stuff in this video and I think there's definitely something for everybody so if you are not already make sure to subscribe to my channel I post brand new home decor and DIY videos every single week here on Lone Fox and yeah it's just a really fun time over here so definitely follow along to be part of the Lone Fox family but I think we should just jump on into today's video because there are five of them and you are not going to want to miss any of them because they are all really, really good, and I'm so happy with how they turned out, so let's get started. Let's kick off this video with something super simple, and we're gonna be creating an abstract art print with this gold frame from Target. It is actually inspired by this one from Anthropology that was $598, and it's not for sale anymore, so I wanted to create a replica version. So what I did was I pulled out the insert picture that was already in the frame prior, and I traced it onto a piece of white butcher paper. This is actually the paper I use to film all my videos on top of, so the white background you guys are seeing is actually just on top of a table. So I'll link that roll of paper below, and then I'm using a bit of the golden carbon black paint. This is from Joanne's Fabrics. I put it in a cup, used a watercolor brush, and added a bit of water just to create my very own like stark watercolor effect. And I pulled up the photo for reference and kind of just very freehandedly created some loop-de spirals and lines and just kind of followed the pattern that they did. But you can totally freehand this as well and kind of give it your own look and design. The only thing I suggest is to make some of the lines a bit thicker than the other ones. So as you can see here, I'm going to be thickening up this line and making it a little bit darker. Of course, the less water you add to your paint, the darker and more opaque it's going to be. So I kind of created a couple different concoctions of paint and watercolor to make a nice little mixture because I wanted a gradient kind of watercolor effect. And that is exactly what I did. So I'm just going to go around and kind of fill in the lines, thicken them up wherever I feel like they can have a little bit more interesting element because I did want this to be a primarily like black and white print with not that much gray. And then once you are completely done, you can just reconstruct your frame however it tells you to do so or however you're supposed to. I actually added the mat down just for an extra like thick support in there and then put the back on there, fastened it shut, and that finished off this little abstract art print. So let's add a little bit of texture to the mix. So I love doing macrame, as you guys know. So we are gonna be doing a macrame project next. And I used a 12 inch and a 14 inch brass ring. And I also used some of this cotton baker's twine and I will link all these supplies for you guys below. And what I started off by doing was cutting seven foot sections of the baker's twine, folding them in half. And I'm actually going to start by looping two of them on to both rings. So pull the ends through the loop of the center onto both rings and then cross them over as shown here. Here, and we are actually going to be fastening these to the inside ring and how you're going to be doing this is with a half hitch knot so you're going to be looping it around once as shown here and then you're going to loop it around one more time like that and you're gonna pull the end of the string through that loop before you pull it tight and that's just going to securely fasten this down and you're gonna repeat the process on the other side and as you can see here I kind of created a triangle because we're actually gonna be working on the outside in so next what you're gonna do is you're gonna add two more strings on each side of the ones that we created and you're going to be fastening these down to the same side as well so you're just gonna basically be crossing these over uh, tying them down to the inside ring kind of see it a little bit as I work in this quicker speed here. So you're going to be, again, folding in half, tying it over, and then working onto the right side. And it's pretty honestly self-explanatory. If you see how I'm actually kind of weaving this, you can kind of give it a go yourself. I'm just making sure that the ones on the right sides are on the underside and the ones that are on the left are going over the top. That way it kind of creates this overlapping effect, which I really like. And you're gonna be repeating those same exact knots for the entire process of this until you reach the center. So I thought I 
once you get closer to the center, you're gonna, again, repeat the same process. You're gonna know when you can stop, basically, when you reach the identical center so that everything kind of fits there. And you can adjust all the strings if you would like. And then what I did was I slipped them under the large ring because I thought this added a little bit more of a dimensional element to it. And then I gave it a little bit of a haircut with a pair of fabric scissors. So I just cut these with a good blunt chop at the end. You can cut them however you'd like. You could do a little uh, chevron shape or you can cut them straight as I did here. And then I also on the back side of the top just added a little bit of a loop for hanging. And I think this turned out such a cute macrame project and it was super easy to create. Moving into another painting project, I'm starting off with a 12 by 16 gesso block. And I saw this at the store, it was 50% off. And I was like, I'm gonna try this because it seems a little bit more substantial than your traditional canvas. And I believe it's just a wooden box kind of covered in gesso. And what I'm gonna be doing is putting down a good coat of tan paint. I'm using a wide brush and just spreading this across very evenly on the front of this kind of canvas because I want this to be the base color for my kind of abstract mid-century painting that I'm going to be doing. Doing. So this one's perfect if you like more of an eclectic look or a mid-century look, or you can really customize it to your own color preference. And what I'm doing next is I'm going to be measuring half of an inch away from the edge on kind of like the bottom third. So I'm going across the entire bottom and I'm also going up the side. So you're going to see in a second here exactly what I mean by that, because I'm going to be taping off and I just wanted that line to be kind of a guideline. So I'm taping off just the bottom section. That way we have a border and I'm going in with this Craft Smart dark yellow paint and I'm going to be doing a couple coats of this on the bottom side and we're also going to be freehanding kind of a squiggly line at the top. That's why I didn't end up taping off the top section because you're going to see me freehand a squiggly line in a second here. So here we go. I'm just kind of doing a arched almost like bubbly cloudy looking effect and this is just to kind of give a bit of movement to more of the sharp shape around the edge and once that's dry i pulled off the tape and i pulled out that carbon black paint i highly suggest investing in this because it is such a pigmented black paint and I'm just going to be creating a series of kind of random dot square shapes on the left side. And I'm only doing it to half of the canvas. Now, I do want to let you guys know that I kind of went back in and fixed this in the end. But I wish I didn't add the farthest left row just because it kind of overlapped at the bottom. And you're going to see what I mean. But I continued this pattern all the way down. I'm almost creating like dalmatian squares in a way but i followed the rule i think i did like nine across or something like that maybe even ten and i also made sure it kind of overlapped the yellow at the bottom i think this just added a layered look and then on the right side i went in and added some lines and these were just i wanted to do it a little bit different than my reference photo which was originally i think an iphone background that i found on pinterest which i'll link below for you guys so i wanted to do some lines because the original had dots across the entire thing so i just did some random kind of abstract lines that had thickness and thinness wherever I felt like it needed it and then what I did was I stared at it for a couple of seconds and I went back in and actually covered up the farthest left set of dots because I just felt like it was a little bit cramped on the left side and I covered it with like two or three coats of this paint I also went in with the yellow and covered up the black dots that over kind of overlapped the yellow there once you're all done with that that's really all you have to do for this piece. And I really love the way that it turned out. I think this is going to look amazing in a room makeover that I'm working on. And that finished off this project. I wanted to throw a mirror in the mix and one of you guys actually DM'd me this and I cannot find the original DM anywhere. So if you DM'd me this, I'm sorry, but I love you for DMing it to me. So what I'm starting off with is a round mirror. I've had this in my stash for a while now and I'm actually getting these two pieces of 12 by 12 chipboard, which is essentially like compacted cardboard. It's just very, 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 very thick cardstock essentially. And I'm cutting it out to be the width of the middle of the mirror and also to be however tall you want it to be. So I'm cutting this one out to be be about 14 inches wide by seven inches tall, but I just suggest measuring it to whatever mirror you are using. And I didn't want to cut the mirror because as you could see the reference photo that I shared with you guys, the mirror was, it had a flat bottom to it. So we're going to kind of create our very own flat bottom by gluing it on top. 
So I'm gluing the two pieces together that are gonna create our bottom section. And you can do this out of cardboard as well if you don't have chipboard. And I'm just reinforcing it with a little bit of hot glue as well. So as you can see, this is gonna go on the bottom half and kind of create that half circle shaped mirror. And what I wanted to do next was add a bit of yarn to this. And originally I was actually going to cut each piece and like glue it on as a tassel. But I was like, why don't I just wrap this entire piece fully in the yarn and it's gonna look like some perfect pretty tassels. And that's exactly what I did. So I got this maroon colored yarn at the yarn store or the craft store. I actually got it at Joann's, but I've mentioned them too many times in this video. So I just didn't even want to say it again, but I got it at Joann's Fabrics. Joann's, please sponsor me immediately. And I wrapped it around there like 8,000 times essentially until you get to the end. And I glued it off once I got to the end, clipped it. And this was our little section. So this is going to actually go on the bottom half of the mirror, but I had some of this brass, scotch washi tape and i thought it could almost give it that nice beveled kind of gilded edge so i actually put it around the entire side i stuck it all the way to the kind of edge of the back and then i taped it off on the front as you can see here i'm pushing it over and it's not gonna lay flat sadly but i kind of like the way that it looked it actually looked almost like it was hammered or kind of pressed around and that's kind of the look i wanted to go for so i added a whole ton of glue to the bottom half of the mirror stuck down our yarn piece on there and then i wanted to create a little brass section as well that was kind of going to go across the top to give us the look of the original mirror so i had this little wooden strip and I'm adding a bit of Fabri-Tac adhesive and just making sure that the washi tape stuck on here because washi tape doesn't secure super well to wood. So I added a little bit more of a security measure, glued it down to the top of the yarn piece and that really finishes off your mirror. I actually added a hanger with some macrame rope and that was the final product. And saving one of my favorites for last, I'm going to be recreating these anthropology wall baskets that literally retail for $98. I'm scared. And I'm going to start off with the base of a Target placemat. This was $5.99 at Target. And I'm using the macrame rope that you guys see me use all the time. I'm cutting it into six inch sections and I'm going to be looping these into the sides. Very, very similar to that fringed wall mirror that I created that you guys literally love. I cannot believe how many of you guys actually recreated that. So the way that I'm doing Doing this is I took my placemat and I'm using a crochet hook and I'm going to be pushing it up through that kind of um, natural material. I don't even know what this is made of actually. Um, through the natural material on the side, it's very easy to put through. And then you're going to loop through your tassel and just pull the ends through. So you're going to be creating these tassels around the entire edge of this piece. Once all the tassels are added on, I just went around and kind of cut any stray ends. I wanted them to be about two and a half inches in length, but you can adjust this to however wide you want it to be. But do keep in mind, if you make them any longer, um, it is going to kind of have a hard time actually standing up when you put it on the wall. So what I'm next gonna be doing is unraveling each piece of rope. So I'm gonna be unraveling all three cords that make up the one macrame rope. And I'm gonna go all the way around and repeat this process once again. Once you're done with that, take a pair of tweezers and kind of fray those edges. This is how you're gonna get that really fluffy, very similar look to the anthropology one. Um, and I'm gonna just be fraying those. You're just gonna kind of comb through. You could also use a comb if you have that, whatever is easiest for you. I just had tweezers on hand. So I frayed the edges of all of our strings. That way you just get a ton and very voluminous edge to this. And once you are done, you can add a little loop on the back like we did with all of our other projects. That way you could hang it on the wall and that finishes off your wall basket. So guys, that was my wall art video for you today. I hope you enjoyed those five DIY projects and I hope you gained some inspiration to create your very own wall art pieces at a much affordable price as opposed to some of those more expensive pieces from Anthropology or places like that. Now, of course, you guys know I love splurging on pieces every now and then. So I am one to honestly purchase an expensive wall art piece if I like it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm going to link as many of the supplies that I use in the projects in the description box below. So you could take a look at the description box for any of those linked products. And also do not forget to subscribe to 
me here on Lone Fox for brand new videos every single week and to become part of the Lone Fox family. And last but not least, before letting you guys go today, definitely follow me over on Instagram. It is Lone Fox Home. I post behind the scenes stuff. I post a sneak preview of this video already. I asked you guys a Q&A, what you wanted to see. You guys can DM me your DIY ideas. So if you ever have anything you want me to create, you could DM me it on Instagram. And I will catch you guys all in my next one. Have an amazing rest of your day. And it's almost Valentine's Day, so... Happy Valentine's Day to you and to everyone around you. So have a great day. Bye, guys.